Hi, my name is Christina Ray Riley, and I'd like to talk to you about my first crime novel called Into the Void. This is actually my fifth novel, but the first one I've had the confidence to publish after it was long listed for the Michael Gifkins Memorial Prize in 2019. And this year, 2020, it's a finalist in the NIO Marsh Awards for Best First Novel, which is very exciting. And um, it has certainly given my confidence in my writing a, a boost and also boosted interest in the book and sales, which is great. And it is uh, wonderful to be ranked alongside the other finalists in this category. So first I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, if I don't sound like a typical Kiwi, it's probably because I was born and brought up in England and my family emigrated to New Zealand when I was 12. As a child, I wrote lots of stories all the time and it was something I did for fun. But this wore off in my teens and it wasn't till my two sons left home uh, that I got back into writing again um, after I did a, a correspondence course in comprehensive writing and I really enjoyed the fiction. Um, and yeah, there was, there's just nothing like the buzz um, when a story comes together and when it has a satisfying ending and it makes you feel so good when you're finished. Um, and that's how I felt about the manuscript of Into the Void when I'd finished it. So that was a good sign. I'll just give you a quick introduction to the story. So it's about a detective, um, Detective Senior Sergeant John Baldrick, but everyone calls him Archie. He's 45-ish, a bit overweight, and he suffers from chronic back pain, especially when things aren't going too well, either work-wise or in his um, personal life, which is a little troubled. So he's not your uh, typical um, good-looking hero, but he, I hope, um, is um, a sympathetic character. Uh, he works alongside a much younger detective constable called Ben Travers. And the story, which is about a missing man, is set in the Manawa too, where I used to live uh, before we moved to Hamilton earlier this year, just a, a few days before the lockdown, actually, which was interesting. So I'll just read you the back cover blurb to give you a better idea of what the story is about. How easy is it for a man to simply disappear? When rural banker Richard Harper is reported missing, DSS John, Archie, Baldrick and DC Ben Travers are drawn into the tangled details of the man's life. Would Harper really have chosen to leave his seriously ill wife and abandon his pregnant girlfriend? Or is there a real threat behind the abusive emails he'd been receiving from desperate clients in the wake of the GFC? On the home front, Archie's marriage is rocky and his two teenage daughters are giving him all sorts of trouble. The frail but beautiful Helena Harper and her magnificent house offer an oasis of calm as Archie struggles to discover who is responsible for her husband's disappearance. Has he really been abducted, tortured or killed? Or is Richard Harper himself behind everything that has happened? Archie and Travers ultimately face a race against time as the case descends into a bewildering morass of obsession, violence and murder. Now that rundown might make it sound as if this is a, a gritty or gory read with the violence, obsession and murder, but it's really not. And that's um, a great deal to do with the kind of crime stories I like to read, which are much more about the mystery, the puzzle, and the psychology of the characters rather than it is about the goriness of the crime or detail about a murder or a violent incident. And I also enjoy stories where the detective's personal life interweaves with the case that he's working on. So, uh, so that the police work, which can be a little tedious and repetitive, doesn't become too boring and that there's something interesting going on on a personal level that uh, will keep the reader's interest, I hope.
one of my greatest writing influences would have to be Ruth Rendell and her Chief Inspector Wexford books. Um, you can probably see behind me that I have a whole shelf of Ruth Rendell um, and uh, these books I've read several times. Um, also, yeah, uh, reading for me has always been a, a form of escapism. So the kind of um, books I like to read are going to transport me into someone else's life, into someone else's world. And I don't really like being transported into a, a horrible world where creepy and nasty things happen. And obviously in a crime novel, nasty things do happen, but I believe there have to be some lighter moments uh, to carry the story along. And, and the mystery has to be an intriguing one to draw the reader in. So that's what I'm aiming for in my Archie novels. And the, probably the first novel to draw me in like this, uh, I read when I was 10 years old, and that was The Secret Garden. And that had a huge influence on me. Um, I just loved the intrigue of that novel, the, the secret and the, the finding out about it. And probably that novel has influenced everything that I now write, which is interesting from all those years ago. So I'm going to read you um, an excerpt from Into the Void from the first chapter. It's a bit of a, a gentle introduction, setting the scene and introducing the characters, which is probably a bit unlike the run of the mill crime novel where you tend to get uh, thrown in at the deep end or in the middle of the action. This has a much slower, gentler start but the pace soon ramps up and it becomes a fast and exciting read. So here's an excerpt from the first chapter. The street was like any other in the outer suburbs of a minor New Zealand city, tree lined with concrete footpaths on either side of the road, though this area was rather more moneyed than most. The well-maintained houses had a solid, settled appearance about them, and the gardens, although small, were scrupulously tidy. The sort of neighbourhood where people frowned at you if your lawns got too long, Archie thought rather sourly. Remind me why we're wasting our precious time on an adult missing person, would you, Travers? Beside him at the wheel, Detective Constable Ben Travers took a corner rather too sharply, causing Archie to wince in pain as his back muscles contracted. And lighten up on the boot, for God's sake, he grumbled. Immediately, the car slowed to a crawl, throwing Archie forwards in his seat. He sighed as his lower back twinged again. It's this woman's husband, Richard Harper, Ben said. He didn't return from a business trip a couple of days ago. She called it in and we gave her the usual spiel about not worrying and that he's bound to turn up sooner or later, but now it's been 24 hours. Since then, the guy's bit on the side has also rung the station, saying he would never have run off without her. So where is he? So yeah, Ben continued vaguely as they took the next gentle corner at a snail's pace. Oh, and Mrs. Harper is also apparently chronically ill. So that's why we're going to see her rather than her coming to us, he added. Archie frowned as he gazed out of the window at the passing houses, which were gradually becoming larger and set in more spacious grounds, the posh end of the street. And I'd say that's another reason why we should be taking this case seriously, boss, Travers added. I mean, what kind of a man would deliberately run off and leave his sick wife? Archie turned to look at Ben's 24-year-old profile. The kind of man who's sick of his sick wife, he said. Travers grunted and his huge hands tightened on the steering wheel. He was at least 10 centimetres taller than Archie, who considered his own height to be a respectable one. The boy's feet, too, were like huge slabs of meat. No wonder he had trouble regulating their weight on the accelerator. Travers planted one of these now on the brake, and they came to an abrupt, spine-jarring halt outside a gated, tree-lined driveway. It was at the very end of the no-exit road. This it? Archie craned his neck to look up at the number, 1224, embossed on a brass plaque attached to the stone pillar on the left of the driveway. The gates were shut. 
Below the number, a small white box suggested a security code entry device. Travers checked the GPS on his phone. Yep, this is it. They sat in silence for a moment. Archie sighed. Well, don't you think it would be a good idea to give the lady a buzz on that thing over there and see if she might deign to let us in? Travers stared at him blankly for a moment, then his face cleared. Oh, right. He bounded out of the car, slamming the door behind him. A light drizzle began to fall. This was only their second day of working together, and already Archie could spot in Travers a graduate of the Harry Hogan School of Hard Knocks and Stymied Initiative. But still, he was keen, enthusiastic, and probably ultimately very loyal once he had gained his respect. Rather like a large Labrador puppy, all legs and feet and costing a fortune to feed. In front of him, the iron gates swung open in a jerky fashion as Travers sprinted back to the car. The suspension lurched as he folded himself into the seat. Then one massive foot came down on the accelerator and the car surged up the metal driveway. On either side of the track, the branches of mature oak trees met above them to form a leafy canopy through which droplets of gathering rain fell onto the windscreen. The drive curved around to the right and then suddenly opened up into a lawned area where it continued in a circle directly in front of the house. And what a house! Just as they drove up, the sun flashed through the clouds and lit its elegant facade like a celestial voila. Travers let out a low whistle. Wow, what a pad. Archie surveyed the three-storied brick building, its bay windows, patio, and the Roman-style columns flanking the front door. What does this Richard Harper do for a living again? He's a banker. Archie frowned. It wasn't the most popular profession in the world these days, but obviously still quite a lucrative one. He got gingerly out of the car, stifling the urge to groan with the effort of straightening up. At 45, he was aware that he was beginning to act like an old man, especially when his back was giving him grief, which lately seemed to be almost all the time. At the enormous oak front door, Travers pulled down on the old-fashioned bell rope, and within the house a distant tinkling could be heard. The rain had stopped, but the sun was once again behind the clouds, and a cool Manawatu breeze funneled towards them from the long driveway. Archie shivered and shuffled his feet as the seconds crawled by. He was just about to give Travers the nod to ring a second time when the door abruptly opened. So that's the introduction. If you're interested in reading uh, Into the Void, you can request it from your local library. Or if you'd like to purchase a copy, uh, it is available in some Paper Plus stores throughout the country. Otherwise, you can email me directly via my website christinaoreilly.com or via my Facebook page, Christina O'Reilly Author, and I will send you a book out myself. Uh, otherwise, it's also available as an ebook on Amazon. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoy the book.